This is Ken Lightburn. I'm president of Nature's Approved and Assured Organics and recently I received a rather remarkable article about Alzheimer's written by Dr. Mary Newport. And today I'm in her home interviewing Dr. Newport and her husband Steve and trying to get some understanding of the remarkable results she achieved in the partial reversal of Alzheimer's using coconut oil. Dr. Newport, could you give us some of the history behind this achievement? Uh, yes. Um, well, Steve and I grew up in Cincinnati. We've been married for 37 years. And uh, Steve has functioned uh, as an accountant and bookkeeper for my practice for many years, uh, working from home, taking care of our children. And uh, he was doing quite well with that until about 2001, 2002, uh, when he began having trouble with some of the more complex parts of his accounting, uh, difficulty doing payroll and uh, annual tax returns and that, that type of thing became uh, very uh, difficult for him. Um, but uh, at that point, I thought, well, maybe our practice had just gotten a little bit more complicated. Um, However, uh, when he began having problems remembering if he'd been to the bank and the post office on a given day, I knew that that was not normal. Uh, so we got him to a physician to evaluate him and the doctor at that time felt that most likely he had a problem with depression and he was depressed at that point. Uh, tried antidepressants, but uh, we continued to see him worsen over time and right around 2003, we moved from Spring, from uh, Dunedin in uh, Florida to Spring Hill. Um, I was opening up a new uh, neonatal intensive care unit here. Steve had great difficulty learning this very small town, which has very few north, south, east, west arteries. He had never had a problem with that before. He could always follow a map, um, but he had considerable difficulty with that. And he also started uh, spending many hours out in his garage looking for something. At the beginning of the day, he would decide he needed to find like a hitch for his truck. And when I would come home um, in the evening, he would still be looking for it. And, and what age was he when this happened? Um, at this point, he would have been about uh, 53. So this is early on, onset uh, Alzheimer's? It's early onset. Under age 65 is considered early onset Alzheimer's disease. Right. Um, so we got him uh, to a neurologist at that point. I called our local um, Alzheimer's family organization to get a recommendation. And we saw a neurologist and he did a complete evaluation on Steve, including an MRI, which was actually normal at that time. It ruled out things like vascular dementia, strokes, other things that might cause these problems. Um, and uh, some blood work, um, but one of the tests that he did at that point was called the mini mental status exam. And this is a 30 point test. It uh, tests for, you know, very common um, items related to memory, your location, uh, orientation and time, uh, those types of things, uh, following instructions, writing out a full sentence, those types of things are on the test. And a perfect score is 30, and Steve scored only a 23 at that time. Mm. Well, you and I and, and the average person would score 30. These are not difficult questions. Uh, so the neurologist felt that he did, in fact, have some type of dementia. Um, these doctors want to see uh, progression in the disease, worsening of the disease before they want to label it as Alzheimer's disease, and they want to rule out everything else. So he continued to evaluate Steve periodically about every six months. And about a year after the first visit, um, he did felt, feel that Steve was worsening. So he put him on a medication for Alzheimer's called Aricept. <clears throat> and then um, over the next year, with continued worsening, uh, he put him on an additional uh, drug called Namenda. Um, both of these have to do with um, uh, allowing more of the neurotransmitter, which is the chemicals that allow the neurons to communicate, uh, making those more available. Right. Um, so um, we did see worsening, um, and the summer of um, 2007. Is, uh, you, mean, you mean under the drugs, he was even, still worsening? Even in spite of the drugs. Uh, he was still these drugs, right. um, you know, basically their, their claim is that they will hopefully slow down the progress of the disease. They don't result in improvement. Right. So um, he did, in fact, um, continue to progress. 
Um, and the summer of, uh, in August of 2007, I had a particularly busy month. Uh, in the newborn ICU, I was getting home late every evening. And he had a three week period um, uh, during which this was happening. And um, I noticed that he was getting rather thin. Uh, he had always been able to cook for himself, get himself food when I was gone, uh, had not been a problem, but I got him on the scale and he had lost 10 pounds over a period of about three weeks. Wow. Sorry. So I realized, uh, you know, when I would come home from work, I would ask him, uh, have you gotten anything to eat? And he would say, oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine, no, I'm not hungry. And so I assumed he had gotten di dinner, but uh, you know, I had I, I started looking for evidence, I couldn't find any evidence that he was mm -hmm. uh, uh, getting something to eat. Um, so uh, at that point, I felt that he was getting considerably worse. Uh, and we did see uh, continued worsening over the next few months um, into early 2008. Um, he developed uh, a much uh, more significant tremor. Um, he had more and more difficulty finding words and putting words together. Um, his personality was uh, evaporating, and, and that's uh, something that you see with um, Alzheimer's disease. There was much less uh, smiling, much less interaction. Uh, when we would talk to each other, we were on a different wavelength. Um, his answers weren't really appropriate, you know, to the conversation that we were having. So uh, this was all very distressing. Um, and um, so, you know, going into the spring, uh, things were looking a little hopeless. And um, I was always keeping my eyes open for clinical trials, new drugs. Our hope had always been that um, these other medications would slow it down enough that when the right drug came along, um, that uh, Steve would still be there to, uh, you know, it, it would be available to him, to, you know, that he could respond to it. Um, so in May of 2008, uh, there were ads in the paper for a couple of clinical trials. And uh, I had a couple days off and scheduled two back-to-back uh, -back screenings for these two different drugs. Both of them um, have to do with attacking the beta amyloid plaques, the plaques that uh, people know uh, are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what happened was the night before the first screening, uh, I thought, well, what if Steve gets accepted into both studies? What if he um, does well? Um, we have to pick one. You can't be in two Probably different clinical two. trials. Of course not. Yeah. yeah. So I decided to do some internet research, looking at the two drugs closely, the risks and the benefits. And um, it just so happened that I came across one of them in a press release with another treatment that was coming along um, that actually showed improvement in and uh, the cognition or the memory of people that have Alzheimer's disease. And you never see that. You never see that associated at this point with an Alzheimer's drug. So I was extremely curious and uh, wanted to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. So I um, continued doing research and I found a patent application for this particular product. Um, they went into um, detail about uh, Alzheimer's disease and what's known about it. And one of the things they discussed at length was a problem that they now know about Alzheimer's disease. They call it diabetes of the brain or brain starvation. And what they have learned is that um, there are certain areas of the brain associated with Alzheimer's that have difficulty getting glucose into the cells. Right. And glucose or sugar is the very basic energy that we all use you know, for most of the time for the, the, all of the cells in our bodies. Um, and what happens with Alzheimer's is that there's something going on with the insulin receptors. You need insulin to get glucose into a cell, and you need insulin receptors to act normally for that to happen too, mm -hmm. and there's a problem with those receptors, and glucose cannot get into the cell. Mm -hmm. So the cells start dying off, and they think this happens at least 10 or 20 years before, really? before you start so seeing people, symptoms. People that are headed for Alzheimer's with perhaps a genetic disposition could be on the downward path for, for, for 10 to 20 10 years? 10 to 20 years. That's, it could be even longer. Um, even, they've even seen terrible. in their 30s, they've looked at PET scans of people that, are, that have a certain genetic profile mm -hmm. and that they see decreased um, mm -hmm. meta metabolism of glucose mm -hmm. even at that point in mm -hmm. some of these people. Mm -hmm.